there are many different types of equations and we're going to talk about how to solve two of them. So the first one I want to talk about is a linear equation. Now with all the equations, your goal is to isolate the variable first to solve and then make sure you check at the end to see that you did it correctly. So we want to again isolate the variable, which is a here, which means we want to get it by itself. Now, if you have multiple variables on different sides, you always want to combine your like terms. So we're going to put all the constants on one side and all the variables on the other. And it doesn't matter which side you do this to, as long as you do it correctly. So I'm going to move the 9a over first, and you always do the opposite sign. So this becomes 5a, so let's cancel out, and then minus 5. Now I want the constant on the opposite side. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I would have 5a equals negative 10. And again, do the opposite sign to isolate. So because this is multiplied, we would divide. And so we get a equals negative 2. However, you want to make sure that you always check to make sure it's correct. So to do that, get what you get your answer and plug it back into the original equation. So if I plug in negative 2 to the left side, and if I solve that, so 5 plus 14 times negative 2 gets me negative 23. Do the same thing on the right side, plug it in. And if you do that, you'll also get negative 23. And that shows you did it correctly because it's a true statement that equals each other. Same thing here, but we have parentheses. So to get rid of the parentheses, we first have to distribute the number on the outside. So this would be 2m plus 20 equals 4m minus 60. Now, same thing, we want to combine our like terms. So we have to move the m to one side and the constant without a variable to the other side. So I'm going to choose to subtract 2m, because again, it's positive 2m, so opposite sign would be subtraction. So this would be 20 equals 2m minus 60. So now I want to move the constant to the other side by adding because it's the opposite sign. So that would get me 80 equals 2m. And then we have to divide to get the m by itself. And so m would equal 40. Now again, you want to always plug that into the original equation. So you plug 40 into the m here, you plug 40 into the m here, and when you do that, you should get, let me consult, 100 on either side. So this side would equal 100, this side equals 100, and then again, you know that you did it correctly. All right. So for this right here, this is a radical because it has the radical equation. It could be a square, a cube, different types of radicals. But if there's nothing here, this is automatically an index of two. So it's a square root. So again, you want to isolate the variable. So since this is negative two, we want to add it to the other side. So I would have the square root of four X equals eight. Now, whatever your index is right here, you want to raise both sides to that power because that cancels out with the radical. So the power, if it's the same as what the index is, will cancel out. So this is just 4x equals 64. And so if you divide both sides by 4, you would get x equals 16. Now it's extremely important, especially with radicals, to solve and again to check your answer. So you want to plug it back in and make sure that on the left hand side, you get six because that's what the right hand side equals to make sure it's true. All right, and here's another example. Now here we have multiple radicals on both sides. Again, all you need to do to get rid of the radical is raise both sides to whatever power, whatever type of root you have. And this is a square root because there's no number, so it's automatically a two. So if I raise both sides to the second power and then I solve, this would be three X minus four because this cancels out with this. And this would be two X plus nine. And so from there, again, I wanna isolate the variable and get and combine like terms. So if I subtract two X and bring that to the other side, that would be X minus four. And then I'd add the four. And then there we go, X here would equal 13. Now again, I need to put that back in and check. So if I put 13 back in here, for this one, you get a decimal. 5.916 approximately, but if you put that into the left side under the radical and check, and then the right side under the radical and check, you'll get that same answer. So again, you know it's a true statement. Now the last thing is, again, to look at extraneous solutions. 
which is why I said it's so important to always check your answer. An extraneous solution is when you do the work correctly and you get an answer like we did here, but when you plug it back in, it doesn't actually work. So it's not that you did the math wrong, it's that it's an extraneous solution that doesn't actually work when you plug it back in to check. So for example, if this was our original problem and we solved it, we did the math correctly and we got x equals negative five. Now we want to go back to check. So we plug in negative five to both sides, the left and the right. So when we check it, we would have five minus this equals negative five. If we reduce this side, negative four, negative five would be a 20. So five plus 20 would be the square root of 25, which is positive five. So because here we have a positive five equals a negative five, which is a not true statement, this means negative five is not the answer and would be considered an extraneous solution. So make sure you always check your answers to make sure that you're right.